Okay, this is going to be my extremely brief and quick introduction on how to play Marvel and TTS. Uh, I'm mostly making this for friends, but it's going to be very casual. Uh, but if you stumble upon it, congratulations. So, this is TTS. Uh, I'm not going to teach you how to subscribe to the mod. You can figure that one out. There's lots of guides. Uh, let's create a game. And Marvel oh, Crisis Protocol. Okay, uh, so this is the latest version of the mod as far as today goes. Uh, they change it pretty often um, as they keep adding more cool stuff. Uh, so I'm mostly going to talk about a lot of the basics you need to get started with this and not try to go into too much detail on the stuff that's changing. So <clears throat> first thing you'll do is either pick a scenario or pick your roster, um, depending on how you want to approach it. Scenario is pretty simple, so I'm going to start with that. Uh, each time you load the mod, there'll be a table with terrain already set up, uh, and then there are decks here next to this sweet little board that lets you pick different pre-made terrain setups. Uh, so this deck, I think, yeah, so rules adhere and strict are the ones I tend to play on, because they follow the rules in the game for recommendations of how much terrain, what size it should be, and that kind of thing. So if you wanted to switch to any one of these, uh, let's do Rush Hour, just grab the card, and put it in the center slot that's even helpfully labeled terrain. Uh, push the button on top, give it a sec, and bam, new board to play on. Easy. Uh, for scenario, there's the extracts and secures, so go through with your opponent, do the whole rigor and roll of priority and all that. Once you have, you know what scenario you're going to play, just grab the cards, put it on the same cool widget, And then there's this button here for set up crisis tokens, and this will automatically place secures and extracts. Um, the other button up here will rotate the map. So when choosing sides in MCP before setting up or scenario, you can pick any one of the four sides, right? If you're not, the player does not have priority. Uh, and so this button just is a very simple, rotates the whole thing, which is really nice. Cool. So we have a board set up to play on. Now we've got to do rosters. Uh, the easiest way to do that is this guy over here. Uh, you can pick your affiliation, which doesn't make a huge difference. It changes your dice roller and things like that, but otherwise doesn't matter. Um, there's this little square of color. If you right-click on that and go into color tint, you can pick your color. Uh, the biggest change here is there'll be a ring around your base of the color chosen. So if we go with this pink, all of our base rings will have a pink color to them, which is nice. And then you're going to create character trays, one for each character you play. So at this point, you understand what your roster is and the point value. So let's say I'm going to do five characters. Bam. Uh, then there's this deck here of all the characters in the game. You just grab the cards you're going to play. So I'll grab just a random smattering and not a real roster. You drag these into the different slots, and then you hit activate. This will spawn the model for you with the rim I was telling you about. It will spawn a set of all the tokens that their card uses, right? So all the status effects and things for that character will be right next to them. And then at the bottom, you have trackers for power on the left and wounds on the right. Left click to add, right click to remove. Simple. Uh, your opponent will do the same. They'll have their roster. Uh, there's the deck here of all the tactics cards. Just grab these, throw them on your side of the table somewhere. Um, nothing really fancy going on with those. Uh, the last button where you were setting up terrain and extra scenarios before, there's a sure deployment lines button. If you do this, your model will snap to the edge of the deployment zone and will not be allowed to go any further, right? Deployment in MCP is within three. So just the back edge of your base has to be within three. Uh, so the deployment zone makes that very easy to make sure you're deploying at max range. When you're done, turn off deployment lines. Uh, there's this score tracker in the middle. It works the same way Right, track the turns, track the score. Uh, there's the default blue and yellow flags. There's also this create custom token based on your Steam avatar. Um, so this is gonna be useful for both tracking score or like claiming objectives. Some people find the avatar tokens easier to follow. So it's worth knowing that button is there. Uh, okay, and I think the last two things I'm gonna go over is movement and attacking. So movement is very simple. Uh, there's these three widgets. 
All right, we'll see, so grab one of those, and then if we zoom in real close, you'll see there's two buttons. So snap will snap it to the nearest base, bend will allow it to bend. So let's say we win our soldier here, wants to move around this truck, we snap to him, we hit bend, we bend this end until we're happy with it, we lock it, and then there's the move button. So move will put your character as far as they could possibly go along with this template. And then there's an undo button as well in case things get screwed up. Uh, but also keep in mind, uh, models in this game can move to any point of the template. All right, so if you only wanted to go halfway, you just grab the dude and put it next to the template. Easy enough, right? Uh, if you're done with a template, you can just drag it off the board. It will put itself back in the tray all nice and, ni nice and neat for you. Uh, the range templates work very similarly. They snap to the character. You can see how far their attacks are. If you have things that are like placed within three, like some of the web swings, they also have a move button and an undo button. Works the same way. Um, there's a refresh button here that I use all the time that just kind of resets all the widgets. So if you have a couple out, if you're moving, doing movement and checking range at the same time, refresh just resets everything. Uh, an important cool feature they added very recently is on the long movement tool only, you can bend it all the way 90 degrees, hit lock, and then you'll see this towards and away. So in MCP, if you're pushing towards or away, you build the widget like this, and then you point it at whoever, right? So if I'm going away from Proxima, I point it at Proxima, and now I know I can't cross either of those lines. If I'm going towards, you can go like that, and then this, these lines do not intersect Proxima. Right, or sorry, these are the lines of the ones I can go on and still be going towards Proxima. Uh, so that's only on the long movement tool, but it's a very easy way to do towards and away. Um, the dice roller is pretty simple, right? Um, you add how many dice you need to roll. So if you're rolling five dice, add five dice, All right? Up and down, easy. Clear just resets it. You hit roll dice and it will roll the dice and then give you the numbers at the top. It also puts them in the chat log down here. So if somebody accidentally hits twice or you need to see what was rolled initially, the chat log will tell you that. Now this, you can see I got two hits, no crits, no wilds, a block, blank, failure. Um, you can, if you have re-rolls, right? Let's say your character gets the re-roll blanks. Uh, if you just click on the number here, it'll reset the die over here and then this button turns into re-roll. So this re-rolls any dice in the bottom part of the tray while leaving the stuff up top. So we can re-roll turns into a hit. Um, the other important thing to note is that, let's say one of these was a crit, to add your exploding dice, you just click add, and it will put them down here, right? It's so kind of the same as the re-roll. The roller will always roll what's down here, not what's up in the top that's kind of locked in. Uh, when you're done, you can hit clear, that resets everything to start, or if you push the gray button in the center, it resets with the current dice pool, right? So if you're doing multiple five die attacks, you can hit the gray button and save yourself a couple seconds clear resets things. Uh, I think the only other thing worth talking, or two more things, right? Uh, so status effects, right? We see all these here. If you just drag and drop them on the character, you'll see they'll appear uh, above their heads, right? So there's an easy way to see what's on where. It's actually supposed to show on the tray, and I don't know why it isn't. Okay, we're back. Uh, so I'm not, you know, mods can be glitchy. I'm not sure why this one was, but you'll see here if Venom's bleeding, it'll appear at the top above his character. Click on it, it goes away. Uh, so status effects and activations are very easy to apply. Um, and then to, if somebody gets wounded, right? So let's say Venom has taken seven wounds. Um, to get to the injury side of the next turn, there's two ways you can do that, right? There's the flip card, which will flip the character card over and update their stamina. So only click this when they're ready to go. Uh, the nice thing here is it also puts it in the chat log. So if you accidentally click it, you'll see Venom had removed seven wounds. So if Winter Soldier here accidentally gets flipped, you'll say remove two wounds. It's like, oh, we can undo that, return the board state. Uh, the other thing that they added very recently is there's this automatic cleanup phase in the top right. So this will move all activation tokens, flip dazed, and remove conditions from people who were dazed. So that's another easy way where it will flip them for you. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, if I forget something, let me know, and I'll do another two-minute video on whatever topic. But I think if you understand the rules to MCP, this is pretty much all you need to know to use the mod.